Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do
Human beings always have everything upside down and backwards. That's the impotency of energy. Anyway, getting to uh, the golden ratio, I don't know if you know what a Liechtenstein pattern is. When someone's struck by lightning, yeah, you can find pictures of it on Google. There'll be a fern-like pattern, you know, a perfect, it looks like a, you know, a tree or a fern, and it's the electrostatic discharge that's uh, encapsulated in someone's skin, you know, hopefully they survive uh, the lightning strike, but this dielectric discharge, that why does it dissipate like that? Because a dielectric discharge or a lightning strike is a discharge, and uh, Eric Dollard says this very brilliantly, he understands lightning quite perfectly, is a discharge into counter space. But why is it discharge into counter space? Because this is where we divide the men from the boys because descriptions are not excellent. So it says that golden ratio, it's beautiful. It's like, well, you show a Liechtenstein pattern, a lightning strike pattern on someone's back. And there's plenty of examples of it online. It's like, why is that the golden ratio pattern you see there? There's also two, uh, you bombard Lexan, which is clear plastic, with a very, very powerful x-rays. And there's even videos of this. They actually sell it as artwork. And they use a discharge rod that's grounded, and they hit it with the tip of a nail that's grounded. They hit it with a hammer. And all that energy inside that lexin, which is just clear plastic, basically. It's a type of plastic. Flashes, and you get a fern-like pattern, exactly the lictin. Well, why? Is that the goal? Well, it's beautiful. Well, that's very superficial. It is beautiful. Mimics nature, everything we say. Why is it like that? Why? The wise people ask why, and they want to understand why. And the answer, just like that hairy armpit chick with a hemp skirt and muddy feet, the answer is not difficult. Why is it shaped like that? Why do we have that fern-like pattern? Just type in Liechtenstein pattern. That's what that pattern is actually called. And the reason for that is ether torsion. The quickest modality, the lowest pressure discharge mediation of counter space is that pattern. It can't be like a straight line. I mean, lightning doesn't discharge in a straight line, nor is that Liechtenstein pattern a straight line. So well, it's a discharge in the counter space. Why does it dissipate that way? The pressure mediation of the discharge in counter space necessitates the divergent lowest pressure mediation for discharge into counter space, which of course happens to necessitatively follow that golden ratio fern-like pattern. The same thing we see in growth, plant growth and animal growth. There are golden angles, by the way. The golden angle of the Pythagoreans is 108, 36, 36, which is the reason why I have this tattooed on the back of my hand. This Pacific triangle, which is upside down, in triplicate makes up the Pythagorean pentagram. It's the only perfect geometry. The 108, 36, 36 are two, gold, are two golden angles, too, which, of course, is the um, angles of 369 that Tesla talked about. And I explained it in my Aurora Sapientia, which is in the download link below underneath this video. I've been posting it now for months and months and months. It's a free download. The answer to Nikola Tesla's 369 secret. Also, too, he said you would understand the universe in uh, terms of frequency and vibration, which of course is also true. But we have also two golden angles of 137.5077 right here, and I have videos on this explaining the sand dollar and the base angle here of 85 is equal to 1. And uh, the proportionality of 137 to 85 is a ratio proportionality of 1 to phi. So we actually have phi, phi, and 1, which is 3.618. Anyway, I don't want to get too deep into that and you know, start filling people's head with a bunch of numbers which don't mean anything. We can simplify it a lot more simple. It's just the lowest pressure point of discharge in the counter space, for example, in the Liechtenstein pattern. It's ether torsion dissipation. Ether torsion dissipation of the discharge in the counter space necessitates that it take the lowest path of resistance. The lowest pass of res path of resistance for a discharge to occur, that beautiful golden ratio dissipation of the Liechtenstein pattern or the growth that we see, because discharge is just the opposite of growth. When people say growth, we're talking about discharge, we're just talking about flip sides of the same coin. We're talking about growth versus decay. Discharge, or uh, discharge is decay. Growth is uh, centrifugal divergence, and discharge is centripetal convergence. So these discharges follow an inverse or an entropy of growth, which we would conventionally, of course, call decay. And the reason why they're beautiful 
reason why they followed the golden ratio. People love to say golden ratio. What is the golden ratio? I don't know, but it's beautiful. We see it everywhere in nature. So that's a nice description, but you, you didn't explain what the golden ratio is or what its relationship to anything. Well, I don't know, but it's just beautiful. You know, it's golden ratio. It's like, these people love to pair it that way. The golden ratio. What is the golden ratio? I don't know, but it's beautiful. <laughs> okay. The golden ratio is the proportionality of one to itself because phi is to one as one is to phi. It itself is the extrapolation, extra, extrapolation, extrapolation and replication of phenomena which always takes the path of least resistance, whether that be in growth or whether that be in decay, charge and discharge. We're actually talking about a discharge, we're just talking about the entropy of growth, which is necessitative. Because magnetism is not something different than dielectricity. We have two words. We have two words for ice and water, and another word for steam, right? But they're all just the same thing. We're talking about entropies, temperature, and pressure mediations of one single entity. Water, right? Ice, water, and steam. Human beings love to create words and extrapolate things out un uh, unnecessarily. Um, when we say magnetism and dielectricity, magnetism is the dielectric field. Those are the two conjugate field geometries in the entire universe. One is uh, entropy, and the other one is growth. But it depends on how you look at it. One is true energy, and one is the, the impotency of energy. Magnetism would be that mushroom cloud, which people think is energy. It's not. Well, it's the manifestation of energy, but that manifestation of energy is the impotency of energy. Obviously and necessitatively so. Respectively, those are the conjugate geometries of force and motion, inertia and acceleration. Also, too, respectively, the geometries of the hyperboloid and the torus. In other words, the true geometry of entropy is the hyperboloid, or the hourglass shape. The geometry of the dissipation of energy, of course, is the torus. That's what everybody's fascinated about. When everybody's fascinated about a magnet, let's assume this is a magnet, they're interested in that toroidal field that surrounds a magnet, but they know nothing about the negative image of that, which is what magnetism is, the true energy field of counter space, i.e. the geometry of the hyperboloid. Big secret. You'll never hear anybody on YouTube that has an understanding of the golden ratio like you will in this video. And I'm sorry this video is incredibly short. Like I said, I talk about this for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. And still, and it's so simple, and still only scratch the surface of explaining it to somebody's mind. Anyway, this is the uh, path of least resistance, which, of course, is a path of highest efficiency, getting back to that Lichtenstein pattern. So I'm just using the golden ratio and the Lichtenstein of that fern-like pattern, which is, of course, the golden ratio. We also, too, see this mimicked in nature and fern growth. We see it in lightning discharges in the counter space, which is the entropy of energy, discharge in the counter space. But it can't discharge in the counter space. Now, counter space, of course, is the uh, non-Cartesian pure potential we say point source, but even saying point source is rather ridiculous. The only way it can dissipate itself at the lowest pressure mediation is not like draining into a single drain hole, because the Liechtenstein pattern doesn't leave like a big black spot on someone's back when they get stuck by lightning. It leaves a fern-like pattern. Well, why is it a fern-like pattern? For that torsion to dissipate, it obviously and necessitatively takes the path of least resistance, and that is the only path that it can take. It's not that it's built into, it's like, well, that's, nature follows this golden, just like the sand dollar. It follows a proportionality, and this is the angle of one, and this is 137.5077 on either side. It's proportionality of one to phi. That's the lowest pressure mediation for growth to occur. In other words, the least expenditure of energy. It doesn't require will or willing or uh, super sentience. God. It just requires the lowest pressure point for either entropy or growth. When we say entropy, we're just talking about uh, discharge, discharge in the counter space. The dissipation of the centrifugal divergence or energy or growth that is dissipated. Same thing with magnetism and dielectricity. They're not two different things. Neither is ice and water two different things. Human beings love to conceptualize and pigeonhole things. This is ice, and that's water, and that's steam. No, it's all the same thing. They're only differentiated out because they have different temperature and pressure modalities, but human beings love to conceptualize. So it's just the path of least resistance, which is also, too, no different than saying the path of highest efficiency. Nature always takes the path of highest efficiency. 
The one in replication is always the most beautiful because it represents the lowest effort in manifestation. There's a really important point you need to grab your mind around. So why is the golden ratio beautiful? People love to say golden ratio. They don't want to know what it means or what it is or why it is or how it is. Because the one is good and what is most close to that which is good is of course the most beautiful. How do you take something that is never objectively visible, which of course is the most beautiful, let's say an invisible gold, if you will, like the soul, the absolute, or the one. It is never an object. If it were an object, it would not be the one. How do you represent that beauty in manifestation, i.e. the phenomena? Well, it must be a perfect ratio proportion. When you say ratio, we're talking about the proportionality of one thing to another. In the case of phi, or the golden ratio, which is phi, it's a perfect proportionality of manifestation of that which is unmanifest. So we're talking about phenomena versus the noumena, the substrate, the invisible. People worship beauty. When people worship anything beautiful in nature, like say a really gorgeous supermodel that has like perfect proportion, they're like, man, that chick is hot. What they're doing is they're just worshiping the one. When people love something beautiful and symmetrical, it's like, wow, I know this is beautiful, and I know it has the golden ratio in it, and I love it, and I want to hang it on the wall and stare at it. What they're doing is they're making an altar to the one. They are, what they're doing is they are subconsciously acknowledging and worshiping the one. Now, this is not the one, and neither is a beautiful face of, a, of the, like, the hottest woman on earth. The one, because all of that stuff fades and decays. And it, but what it is, it is the objective manifestation and an altarpiece. Uh, yeah, not a talisman, but superficially so a talisman. An idol. A symbol of objective representation of what is most good. Because the good cannot be objectively, you know, I say, worshipped, admired, loved, beloved, uh, adored, um, proximal to, but it's the only way we can because that is the ratio of the lowest pressure mediation of proportionality and manifestation of the one that we can objectively acknowledge. Whether that be a sand dollar, whether it be the fern-like pattern, that we see in nature or the Liechtenstein pattern on somebody's back. You also see Liechtenstein. You can actually take um, um, high discharge uh, devices. They'll take wet wood and there are there's videos of this on YouTube. Instead of someone's back getting struck by lightning, you see these Liechtenstein patterns of energy dissipation where they actually stick high voltage lines on a piece of wet wood and you can see it just it creates immediately this beautiful Liechtenstein fern-like pattern. It's all over uh, YouTube, by the way. Um, so it's the replication of that which is most beautiful because it is the closest ratio proportionality of the one to itself, which is also, too, the lowest pressure of manifestation and a discharge or the entropy into counter space is the lowest pressure discharge possible. Think of the ether or think of counter space as having its own pressure. Okay, you can't discharge um, lightning into like a hole. Lightning follows this fern-like discharge pattern. Well, why? Why doesn't it, since it's encountered, why doesn't it just like create a hole and discharge into a little hole, like the water in your drain? Because ether has its own torsion, so the only way for energy to dissipate is along the lines of least resistance. And that line of least resistance is a proportionality of discharge, which is that fern-like pattern. So that entropy of discharge is no different than uh, the dissipation or discharge of energy in manifestation because this sand dollar had to eat stuff and it had to grow and the lowest path of resistance for its manifestation to occur is this golden ratio proportionality. We see all of this through nature whether it be apples and oranges and trees and ferns and phyllotaxis plant growth, everything. Everything that the stupid people that, that's a golden ratio, it's beautiful. So, yeah, but what, what, do you, what is the golden ratio? I don't know, but it's beautiful. <laughs> There's a difference between empirical knowledge and wisdom, folks. Wisdom is asking why and coming to the deep understanding of why, the big why. Um, 
So why is the golden ratio beautiful? Because the one which is good and that which is closest to the good must be, by definition, a ratio proportionality of the good. Because phi is to one is one is to phi. In other words, phi, i.e. the golden ratio, is also one. Let me repeat that because that's so important. And if you understand it, you'll understand more than 99% of the dumb critters walking this planet right now. Phi is one. Because phi is to one is one is to phi. In other words, that which people consider to be beautiful is nothing other than a phenomenal representation of the one itself. You can say the one, the good, the absolute, or the agathon. There's a reason why the first two numbers of the Fibonacci sequence are one and one. It's principle and attribute, like light and illumination, the inseparable holos of principle and attribute. This guided extrapolation is, again, the one in lowest replication requiring the least effort. In other words, the highest energy efficiency is the lowest pressure discharge, whether that be in entropy or manifestation. Because what we see is beautiful in the golden ratio in nature can be seen in discharges or it can be seen in charges as manifest. We're talking about either entropy or growth. Manifestation or demanifestation. The same thing with dielectricity and magnetism, which are both the exact same thing. When we say dielectricity and magnetism, we're actually talking about um, counter space versus space. But because when we say magnetism, we are actually talking about space. A toroid or a balloon, yeah, is the manifest. Space is just the posterior attribute of a divergent magnetic field, by the way. An expanding toroid of the discharge of energy that we call magnetism creates space. Space has no property. Space is not a thing. Neither is a shadow. A shadow is not a thing at all. A shadow is just an attribute of the absence of light. Space is the posterior attribute of the absence of true potential or the dielectric, i.e. counterspatial pure energy or potential. Anyway, in a nutshell, this is the secret of the golden ratio that the superficial, because the whole world is superficial, um, crystal rubbers or chakra aligners. <laughs> if you go to like a rock show, there'll be these sections. I love going to rock and mineral shows. There's these sections are where the New Agers are at, and they'll have, have all these golden ratio paintings or things. Like, isn't it beautiful? It'll align your chakra. <laughs> it's like, what is the golden ratio? Is this, you want to confuse one of us. So what does the golden ratio mean? I don't know, but it's beautiful. And it's okay for someone to ignorantly say, this is beautiful. It, it follows the geometry and symmetry of life and the divine, and I'm going to hang it on the wall. What you're doing is you're just creating a talisman or a, uh, a metaphysical symbol, religious. This is the difference between religion and metaphysics. Is religion is just a secularized metaphysics for the, uh, the Patugina class. Patugina is ancient Pali. If you... I'm not going to give you the translation of Patugina, but someone out there will know what I'm talking about. It's just a talisman or a symbol of what is adorable. It's beautiful. It's the golden ratio. Just like a beautiful person. So I get offended when people say, you know, stop staring at that pretty girl. And it's like, why? I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm uh, admiring, uh, giving praise to the one or the absolute because this person has the, uh, the logos in their face of uh, divine symmetry or the golden proportionality. Because human beings should be and natively are, consciously and subconsciously, always attracted to and give praise to that which is most beautiful. And what is most beautiful is always the proportionality of the manifestation of growth in appearance and phenomena of the one itself. There's nothing bad about that. It's only bad if you go... Hey, girl! <laughs> You're not supposed to do that for obvious reasons, you know. So this is the, uh, in a nutshell, the secret of the golden ratio. I did not come close to explaining it fully and totally. You can't do that in a 20-minute section, which I guess is how long this video is. But Anyway, I hope you like this video. If you do, any donation is always welcome, because I lead a simple life, and I don't get paid much. And I work four jobs seven days a week, and anything always helps, even if it's a buck. Trust me, it helps. Thanks for watching. Lux Everitas.